Hey there everyone, my name is Ritesh and welcome to another update video. I really like doing the update videos because these videos tells the whole community about what's happening in the tech industry. Every single event of these scale and these level provide so many free tools to us, to developers, so that we can work better, write better code and publish better products. And I love doing these kinds of update videos. So welcome to another such update video in which I'll walk you through that what happened recently at the PostCon, the Postman update event. I know a lot of you missed it, but not to worry, I'm here. Now, I totally get it when there is even a tiny bit of Apple event that recently happened and rest of all the things don't get that much of attention that they should be getting. So it's no fault of Postman, it's no fault of Git GitHub, it's the Apple. Their charm is so high in the tech industry that everybody keeps on talking about that. Not any the, anymore the case. In this entire video, I'll walk you through some of the important updates that came with the version 11 of Postman and I think that will unlock a little bit more of your superpower, just like it has done for me, it will do some of the magic for you as well. Although there is an official article and blog uh, from the Postman team itself, but I have actually rewritten it, not entirely, only the things which are interesting from my perspective and from my take itself. So I'll walk you through with that entirely. So in this video, we're gonna be seeing some of the demo on the Postman app itself, and we'll be reading through an article which I have written, and I'm pretty sure you're gonna enjoy this one. So let's go ahead and get started with this one. So in case you don't know, these days I'm writing a lot of articles uh, at ChaiCode, Dot com, so you can hit the chaikode.com slash blog and you'll find there are a lot of articles that I'm writing. Just hit the blog and there's a lot of them that I'm constantly writing. In this one, we are focusing on Postman changes that every developer should know, version 11. So what's new that has come around in that? First of all, yeah, there's a cool theme, so I really like this one. Uh, not worth your attention, but hey, tool should look at least a little bit cool. And by the way, we can go ahead and check into the settings about the version update, and it's I'm on version 11.0.12. It's really nice. And there are a lot more theme options. You can try them out. Nothing like su super like, hey, this is the coolest one of all, but hey, it, it's nice. Uh, it's good to have themes and it's good to have high contrast dark and all these things. I'll go with AU dark. Looks pretty cool now. Yeah, I wish I could change that orange. I'll seek around that if I can do that. Uh, but anyways, uh, let's go ahead and talk about that. Now, these days, whenever there is an event that happens, usually it's all centered about AI and AI and AI. Of course, AI is there, it's a good part of that, but it's a fresh take when I saw that the Postman event was centered more about reducing the friction between the different teams that are there. And they have taken a little bit inspiration from Figma as well, which is my favorite part of this entire conversation. So yes, super happy that they didn't took the route of AI everything, uh, but only inject AI that much, which is important and which reduces my friction. Don't over sprinkle it. It's like a nice salt and pepper. A little bit is always good, but if you throw around too much, <laughs> it, nobody likes that. So I really like the approach with that. So first of all, in the article, you'll find that in case you don't know what the postman is, which is totally fine, everybody starts from some of the areas or some of the starting points. So postman is a tool, which a lot of people will say that it's a tool for testing APIs, which is not. I really think it's a core part of development, whether you're doing the backend development or frontend development, professionally especially, uh, then postman is an almost unavoidable tool and that's what it is. So go ahead and try that out. By the way, it's absolutely free for all developers having its root from India. That's why I love this. Anyways, everybody loves that. So uh, there are some new updates in the Postman. The first update that we're going to talk about is the package library. So package library, uh, we all have seen that whenever there are some of the API calls, you definitely want to write some test cases. So for example, if I'm building, let's just say an authentication application here, I have a sign up application. I don't want to hit the sign up API again and again and again. I want to write some of the test scripts so that when I'm writing other modules, maybe products and maybe orders, if I need to just check the entire authentication, I can run the entire collection and it does the job for me. In one of the earlier videos, I showed you that how you can write the scripts for the pre-request and the post-request uh, and you can just use it to perform the entire script. It can register new users in your test database or uh, you can just use random variables to use uh, emails, username, even can throw random passwords to check out different things. 
Now Postman is taking it to the little bit of the next level by injecting a package library. So this kind of a thing is really common that you will have the authentication and sometimes the login sequence is almost same and the test can be almost same, just a few variables need to change, maybe checking for the JWT tokens are almost same for all the applications that you're building. So now you can actually use this package library and create your own package. So if I go ahead and say open package library, I can go ahead and create packages, just go ahead and create a package, name the package, and you can write all of your tests. And through this, you can, you can transport this package into different applications as well and in, in between your teams as well. I really like this approach and I'm thinking like, why wasn't already there and why nobody thought about it? Like, it's, it's a no brainer that I should have the packages just like this and any code that I'm writing in here uh, should be saved in my package somewhere. Just like I save my snippets of connecting with MongoDB or connecting with Postgres. I don't write it thousand times. I save it uh, in some of my snippets or help or get the AI to help me write those. Uh, this is no brainer. In fact, if you're if you're building up an express application and you're writing hundreds of times these basic boilerplate code, I don't think there is a sense in that. Once you know how it's being done, uh, that's it. You don't need to do it. So I think this uh, integration is really nice and I can just open this up in the new tab. You can read more about this uh, from the blog article that reused the script and it's all about the package library. So this is how you add the package. Just write your code into the scripts. Just like I show you, you can just go ahead and click on any sign up, uh, go into the scripts, write your code here. And whatever the code you are having, so for example, you have this test, you can just select this and add it to the package and you can add it, throw it around in any of the package. So I really like that. And uh, uh, you can change a whole lot of things, add it to existing package. In fact, you can bring the code from existing package into your project as well, which I really like that. Uh, pretty cool approach. And I was thinking like, why wasn't already there? Like why we didn't thought about it. Now, next one is something which is one of my all time, like second favorite. My first favorite is still a different one, but this is the second one which I like. On the fly comments. Now, this is something, uh, hear me out. We all work with the design team. I'm pretty sure you have also worked with the design team as well. And they all the time are in Figma. They don't leave Figma. Even our design team don't even come to Slack. They just talk to each other, even to developers within just Figma. They even force, not force, but almost force all the developers to make the changes within the Figma to write the comments just there and ask for help or anything in the, in the Figma itself. And I really think that there should be more such tools which help the developers to not leave their ecosystem. I mean, Slack is good, Teams is good, all the communication channels are good, but having this ability that if I need any explanation or anything, I can just select anything and write comment on that. Like, oh man, this is, this is really nice. And I don't know if they have taken some inspiration from Figma or not, but hey, I'm calling this as, as close as to Figma. I, I never saw this approach anywhere else. I saw it like probably there might be others approach, other platform which might be using this, but I saw it for the very first time aggressively being used in the Figma. And I can do that now in the Postman itself. So let me just show you. So whatever you have, maybe you have verify email and you want to know what this token is. I can just click on it, double click, and I can start commenting on this. And I can even tag my friends and all the teammates. Hey, what is this token? Please tell me. Is this a, a refresh token or is this an auth token? <laughs> what is the? I can just ask it here and they can just respond it directly there. Then I can remove the comments. Like, ah, I like this. I like this approach. And that's exactly what I've written in this entire uh, section that, hey, I, I like this approach, <laughs> the comment section. It's not really the biggest and the groundbreaking of the feature, but it makes my life a little easier as a developer. It reduces the friction to talk to the front-end and back-end team. And if you have worked any, even for a few days, uh, where a professional back-end team is there and a professional front-end team is there, there's a lot of communication that happens. Uh, can you modify this back-end API? Can you give me uh, more details in the collection directly? Why can't you give it to me? Why can you give it to me? Uh, can you change the route? It's not making sense. I'm able to, there's a lot of communication that happens. Uh, this brings me to the next update that yeah, apart from this, there are some Slack integration and they are also promising to have some of the Microsoft team integration. I don't care about Microsoft teams. I don't use it. Uh, but yes, the Slack integration is really nice. And 
a lot of updates are actually going into the VS Code extension. Now, I do have VS Code extension of the Postman, but I rarely show that in the tutorial. I rarely use it. I prefer to have a standalone entire app as a Postman. It's a tool and it's already being cooked up, well cooked up in the app itself. So having that same cooked up being transferred to the extension and then wait for some of the features to roll out. Like recently they have rolled out the feature that now you can share the environment variables. These are already there for me. I don't want to wait for them just to use, just to be there in the VS Code. I'm not like a Vim mindset that I don't ever want to leave the Vim. I leave VS Code whenever there's a requirement. I go to Slack, I go to Postman, I go to different apps. That's kind of a development flow for me. So yes, they have now, tr they are trying to reduce the friction by having the Slack integration. This is a welcome change, I would love to say, uh, but really not in the top tier list if I have to ra rate them or rank them. This is good. Uh, I would rank, rank any day this as the highest of this. I think this is really, really cool. So I think, uh, go ahead, take this advantage. And that's all freely available. So why not to take the advantage of this one? Now, here comes uh, my most favorite one, which is Postman AI. I know uh, you are tired of hearing AI here and there, but let me tell you this. Postman AI is nothing new. It's, it's already there. I've been using it. A lot of people other than me have been using it. But now it gets its own separate place. So if you go onto the Postman, at the bottom you'll see the Postbot. And you can just open it and ask any of the questions to it. It can add test to the request, test to the response. My favorite one to teach is visualize the response. I don't need to take the response and go onto some website to show the response uh, in tables or in graphs and whatnot. It just does it for me right there. And the best part, my favorite one, it adds the documentation, which is like killer. The Postman documentation is way above what I would have written it because it's an AI, it's a bot. It doesn't leave any cases and I'm sometimes lazy. I don't want to write that. I'll just write the basics of it, but it does a thorough job into it. So that's, uh, that's my favorite. You can ask it to write any test cases. You can ask it to write the entire documentation, visualize the thing. So that's, that's what it is. So notice here it says, uh, add detailed documentation, include information about the request, response, and uh, add the edge cases. Even write a sample Axios uh, as well as React query response. It does, it does it. And I really like that, that it can do all of this for me. Uh, the more help I can get from AI, the faster I can ship the product. So I really like that example response. Uh, I'm not gonna write my documentation again without the help of AI. Probably I'm leaning towards it, but that's great. Another thing which is, I'm gonna be using it in the upcoming videos is, I can even ask the Postbot to visualize the response in tables and chart. So sometimes uh, when I'm teaching beginners about handling the APIs, the response is really, really big. It has so many of the fields and I teach them how to extract those fields and having them being properly organized in a data structures like arrays or a tree or a chart or a table, it's helpful. It's super helpful for teaching purposes. And that's that's what I'm gonna be using it for teaching all of this. Uh, so I think you should definitely give it a try. There's so many options all available for free and I really like that. Now, another thing that you might notice here is there, uh, notice here there's, it says Vault. Now this is a fairly new addition in the Postman. You don't have access of this. I don't have access of this. Uh, I don't have it up here. Now notice here, I can just click on it. It says, hey, I can set up the vault. And this is really, really nice. But this is like majorly for the intention and purpose of the enterprise customer. But hey, I can just go ahead and uh, add the vault and all these things, uh, secret key, save this to password manager. I'm gonna be deleting this. I'm not gonna be using this. This is not my, uh, code writing machine, this is my tutorial machine in itself. So anyways, so what is this Postman Vault? Now Postman Vault does something which frustrates all of us, storing your secrets and keys. And <laughs> oh boy, we all know the nightmares of storing uh, the keys. There are different keys for local environment, different keys for testing environment, different keys for production environment. And although there are some dedicated startups who are trying to solve this, I really, really appreciate them. I really think it's a fun thing from the Postman side that they have came forward and are trying to solve this problem. I really appreciate anybody who comes forward and try to solve this problem. This is a years old problem uh, because still to this date, you probably won't believe it, but 
the secrets and the passwords which should be all secret are traveling in the WhatsApp chat and the Slack chat for all the corporates. Yeah, that's, that's the case that's happening right now. If we could have a better way of transferring them, and I'm talking about the big corporate houses. Yes, this happens. You know this. You can tell me in the comment section as well. This happens. Uh, so having the Postman Vault means I can keep my secrets secure and transfer them from the front end to the back end to the back end to the front end. Whole team can access this. And I can keep some of the secrets exposed to only the development team, some to the testing team. And it automatically injects all that in the Postman. Uh, good one. But it's right now in the early beta. I am pretty sure they are working on it day and night and they can probably make it a lot better. I can just open it up, I can add my secret and get the secrets up here, key value. Uh, that's it, allowed domain and all of that. And uh, usage is also pretty simple. Uh, let's just say if I go ahead and write, uh, what should I write? So let's just say if I write, go ahead, chai, the value is t, t man. So that's, that's my value. I can just go ahead and add this and then I can check this, peek into it, that says t man. And whenever I want to use it, all you have to do is just go ahead and remove this, use your variable, and then you can use vault like this, and then you have an access to this. So like this, that's it, that's all you have to do. Uh, they have a great article on this of how usage, oh man, I love the comments. <laughs> so you can actually go ahead and use that. There's a nice article on their documentation page itself, but yeah, it's fairly new, I like that. So on a conclusion, yes, there are some good updates. My favorite one is the comments. I, I would rate it number one. And the second one is the AI help. That, that's a lot of help in there. And the package library. I'll be definitely using it in the production quite a lot. I can actually move a lot of my snippets from snippets to the package library itself. And that's really nice. Now, although there were many more updates, if you'll check out the version 11, the the original article from the Postman itself, you'll find a lot of other interesting updates as well. But I thought to keep it short, shrink, and something which makes me interesting, I, I only share that much of part. Uh, otherwise, what's the fun of having a, a YouTube uh, channel in itself? So I hope this video has added some other value to your life. If yes, uh, then go ahead and leave a comment in the comment section. If you have no idea what to add a comment, just say, looking forward for the next video, and I'll keep on bringing uh, more such fun stuff. By the way, uh, keep on waiting. Uh, very soon I'll be dropping another video in the series of backend development. We are doing a next level of backend development. Uh, do keep an eye on that and I'll surely bring that video very, very soon. Catch you up in the next video.